Thank you very much again for joining me on part two of how to build your goblin camp. Let's get right into it. I want to start off by saying that if you haven't watched part 1, you should definitely check out that video first. And if you want to stay up to date with my madness, subscribe. Now on to the build. The first thing I do when starting this project is make myself some lumber out of pink foam. And again, you see me doing this using my Proxen hot wire cutter and some pink foam scraps. I make sure to give myself some variety. I then give them a wood texture by running a wire brush through them. I also saved some pieces from the stump fort from the last episode to make sure I had some standalone barricades. The idea I was going for here was that the goblins would take the other half of that and actually use them for something, not letting anything go to waste. So I guess as you can tell, today we'll be making two different types of barricades. The goblins I like to run are a little bit more resourceful. So they would take advantage of all the scraps they have left over from making the stump fort. Here I just cut the bark into segments. I make some bases out of styrofoam board for the first batch of barricades. I attach them together using hot glue. I also add some lumber to make it look like the goblins have fortified their barricade. Then I add some toothpicks to make sure the goblins don't get rushed in. I simply pin them through my styrofoam. And here I just add another piece of lumber in the front. I'll get back to this barricade in just a moment, but for now, let's just get started with the next style of barricades. For these, I simply use cardboard for the bases. I also shave off some toothpicks to make them look like actual spikes. I use my lumber from earlier and hot glue it together by applying hot glue onto a piece of cardboard and then onto the pink foam to avoid melting the foam. I put three posts vertically and then two or three planks horizontally, almost like a fence. I then pin some holes where the nails would be on the planks. Then I add the spikes. Using my homemade ground mix, I texture the styrofoam board and the cardboard. When working on painting the wood, remember that the last step is the most important step, the step where you dry brush the gray onto the terrain. So don't worry too much about what brown you use for the wood, just make sure that you texture it right and the dry brush at the end will take care of the rest. The same tip applies to the bark barricades, although I still add a wash of Raglan flesh shade. I do this because in my world, the trees they use are the remains of forest guardians that have naturally passed away. The goblins in the stories I run have developed a culture that is very much like a Native American culture. They have learned to coexist with nature, including treants and sometimes even packs of wolves. Eventually, maybe I'll get into different types of crafting crafting like world building or even crafting lore. 
the map on the screen will soon be released and given to my patrons of any tier. I will eventually release more on the world, but for now, enjoy the map of Sikame, the Grand Plain. I want to give a huge thanks to all my patrons, I can't thank you enough. I'll try to repay the support as best as I can. I hope you enjoyed the video, stay updated by subscribing. The last camp video will be released next Crafty Thursday. I'll catch you on the flippity side.